made Valkyrie, NASA's humanoid robot. Standing over six feet tall and weighing 300 pounds, she cuts an imposing figure. She is designed to operate in challenging environments, such as areas hit by natural disasters, but she could also one day operate in space. So we're not trying to replace human crews, we're, we're really just trying to take the uh, dull, dirty and dangerous work off their plates. Sean Azimi is the dexterous robotics team leader at NASA. He said humanoid robots which resemble humans could potentially handle risky tasks in space, so astronauts can prioritize exploration and discovery. With the right software, he says a humanoid robot could use the same tools and equipment as humans. For instance, robots could be tasked with cleaning solar panels or inspecting malfunctioning equipment outside the spacecraft. In particular, with a humanoid robot, it's very intuitive to be able to directly drive the arms and move the head. Um, and that's what we're going to see with, uh, with Valkyrie today. Um, but when we're thinking ahead to um, operations from Earth, we will be operating with a much higher degree of autonomy, where the human operator on Earth will be um, more strategically giving the robot tasks, and the robot would be responsible for completing those tasks autonomously. Back on Earth, NASA has partnered with robotic company Aptronic, which is based in Texas. It wants to learn how Aptronic's earthly robots could benefit future robots destined for space. They want to see a viable system on Earth before we take these systems into space, into Mars, into, onto the, the moon. Nick Payne is the chief technology officer of the firm, which has been developing Apollo, a humanoid robot whose earthly task will include working in warehouses and manufacturing plants. It is being developed to move packages and stack pallets. The company plans to start providing the humanoid robots to companies in early 2025. Payne says Apollo possesses clear advantages over its human counterparts, particularly endurance. We're targeting having this system online 22 hours a day. And so um, there's multiple ways to do that. You can have a kind of trickle charge if you want to have a tether on the robot. Alternatively, um, this does have a swappable battery, so you can work for four hours, swap the battery, and then keep going in a very quick uh, duration. So we're looking at kind of keeping the system online for uh, the most amount of time that we can. Robots like Apollo are designed with modularity in mind to be able to adapt to many op applications. And uh, you know, that's where NASA is really trying to get that insight to see um, what are the key gaps where we would need to invest in the future to bring a terrestrial system into the space environment and certified uh, for operating in space. 